students uh, hope all of you are well so this is my first video lecture on the uh, statistics and uh, why i am making this video lecture because uh, today onwards uh, the topics we will learn are the most important topics of the statistics okay so first of all uh, i am starting with the topic of the measure of correlation coefficient all of you know that the uh, pdf file is already provided to all of you now we will discuss it thoroughly okay so let us start with the measure of the correlation coefficient so to learn about the correlation coefficient we have to learn about the bivariate data you know in the probability theorem all of you have learned the bivariate sample and uh, you know about the random variables whenever two random variables are given in a two dimensional system then these are created uh, then these create a bivariate sample or bivariate data for which we have calculated in probability the marginal distribution marginal density like these topics okay we have learned in the probability so what is the bivariate data suppose we are considering two random variables measuring two different things say one class of students we have taken and the class of students are our population now we want to measure two different things from this class of students say i am measuring the height of the students as well as the weight of the students so height of the students are taken as a variable can be taken as a variable capital x and the weight of the students can be taken as another variable say capital y said that i have given in this note so this will create some random variables and the values of these random variables are nothing but the samples sample points okay or the spectrum of the random variables that we learn in the probability it is just like the same thing we have learned in the probability okay so whenever you can think that i am measuring the height as well as the weight so i can take the heights as one column and weight as another column so there are two points we have for a single student say height of a student is 5 feet and weight of the student is say 50 kg so 5 comma 50 representing a point in a two dimensional coordinate system so if we want to draw the diagram of this data then that diagram is known as a scatter diagram so what is a scatter diagram for a bivariate sample the distribution the diagrammatically representation of the bivariate data is nothing but a scatter diagram now after drawing the scatter diagram we can measure how these variables are related it may happen that i am choosing the two different attributes that is the height of the students and the weight of the students this may have some relation among this or this may have no relation so if i take some different attributes we have to measure the relation between these attributes the measurement or the degree of association between two variables or two different attributes are commonly known as the correlation okay so if height and weight are related by 60 students in your class then how we can get the relation between these two are this relation inverse le proportional are this relation positively proportional or something etc we have to find out so that measurement or that degree of association is nothing but known as the correlation so if x and y we have two variables and we have no relation between these two variables then the correlation will be zero and if we can see x increases with the help of y that is y is getting increase as well as x is getting increase and y is getting decrease as well as x is getting decrease that is both the variables are depending on each other as a proportional way then we we say that x and y are positively correlated and whenever we can see that one variable is getting increase rather than the other variable is getting decrease that is opposite type of behavior we can see then we can say that x and y are negatively correlated so these are the 
diagrams scatter diagrams for the positive correlation negative correlation and zero correlation after this we will go to the covariance one of the most important topic that we will learn here suppose we have two variables x and y random variables and their sample points are measured like this way x1 y1 x2 y2 xn yn then the covariance of two variables x and y will be denoted by cov of x and y and what is the formula that is 1 by n summation of xi minus x bar yi minus y bar where x bar and y bar are the algebraic mean or arithmetic mean that you have learned in the measure of central tendency so simply first of all to find out a covariance we have to take the mean of two variables xi and yi and take the product xi minus x bar yi minus y bar and take the summation divided by n that will give us the covariance okay depending on the covariance the covariance can also be formula uh, the, the formula of covariance that i have written here it can be also simplified and the simplified formula can be written like this 1 by n summation xi yi minus 1 by n summation xi and 1 by n summation yi so generally in our practice problem purpose we will use this covariance formula for simplicity okay now let us go for the correlation coefficient so if x and y are two variables are given and these are the set of observations we can have seen n pair of observations then the correlation coefficient between x and y is nothing but cov of x and y by sigma x sigma y sigma x sigma y are what the standard deviations of x and y that is the positive square root of var x and positive square root of var y okay so in case of the correlation coefficient we have to first find out the sigma x sigma y as well as cov of x y there are so many uh, <coughs> notations are used for correlation coefficient that is r x y mu x y rho x y these are the notations the notation that will be given in the question you have to follow that notation throughout your answer okay now let us try to find out correlation coefficient one of the very important problem maximum problem that i am giving you in the notes or the video lectures are basically coming from the university questions okay so these are mainly the important problems first of all solve these problems by yourself then check the answer from this note as well as try to solve some other problems relating to this topic okay same type of problem now if you have to find out the correlation coefficient of this bivariate data simply we have making the table xi yy since for covariance we need xi yi that i have written here summation xi yi we need also we need sigma x and sigma y for these two cases we are making two more columns that is xi square and yi square so all the formulas we know now simply find out the covariance that is 1 by n summation xi yi i have already told you for computation purpose we are using this formula so 1 by n summation xi yi minus 1 by n summation xi 1 by n summation yi so summation xi summation yi both are zero so this value becomes zero so covariance becomes this if we only need the covariance that is our required answer now to find out sigma x and sigma y i think all of you have practiced this sigma x and sigma y so many times that is find out the variance 1 by n summation xi square minus 1 by n summation xi whole square that is the def uh, definition or formula for the variance okay and take the positive square root then you will get the sigma x so sigma x square equals to what 1 by n summation xi square minus 1 by n summation xi whole square so that is the sigma x similarly find out sigma y and you will get the value of the rho xy okay now let us go for a simple note what is the simple note it will help us to find out the measurement of the correlation coefficient okay now the note says that if you change the origin or the scale of the observation origin means you are taking the difference of xi from a particular point you can take xi minus x bar you can take xi minus another thing 
if you choose any point from the xi observation and you are subtracting it from xi then that point is nothing but said to be the origin generally to calculation purpose we are taking the origin as our mean that is x bar okay so the formula or the theorem says that or the note says that if we can see here that ui equal to xi minus a by b and vi equal to yi minus c by d where b and d are the scale of the observation it is totally depending on you what you are choosing want to choose no matter what happen the correlation coefficient of xi and yi and the correlation coefficient of ui and vi will be same no matter you are choosing a and b or c and d whatever may be the value of a b or c or d you are choosing the correlation coefficient value between xi yi and ui vi will not be changed so r xy and r uv both will be same this theorem helps us to find out the measurement of the correlation coefficient okay this is the most important problem which have several times repeated in the exam that find out the correlation coefficient between the value of the correlation coefficient or the question is that prove that the correlation coefficient lies between minus 1 and plus 1 okay so we are considering two variables capital x and y and we are taking in set of observations that is x1 y1 x2 y2 x and y n and for simplicity i have already told you that we can choose any value of a b c d so we are considering a and b as the means that is x bar y bar c and d as the standard deviations that is sigma x and sigma y for the simplicity of this theorem so ui equals to x my x i minus x bar by sigma x vi equals to yi minus y bar by sigma y okay so we know that from the previous note or the previous theorem that the correlation coefficient between x i y i and u i v i will not be changed so the thing happened here so we have to find out the correlation coefficient of u i v i okay so let us find out the correlation coefficient so to get the correlation coefficient we have to find out the covariance of u v as well as the sigma x and sigma y okay so summation ui square will be equals to what take the whole square on both side so after solving this we can see here 1 by sigma x square out of this summation because it is independent of i and this become xi minus x bar whole square now all of you know if i take 1 by n here inside 1 by n it will become varix so taking n outside and adjusting it by 1 by n inside so we have varix that is sigma x square so summation ui square becomes n similarly summation vi square automatically becomes n now let us find out the value of summation ui vi because all these values we need so summation ui vi equals to summation of xi minus x bar yi minus y bar by sigma x sigma y now obviously you can see that sigma x sigma y is independent of i so it is out of the summation and summation xi minus x bar yi minus y bar will be within the summation. So if I am taking 1 by n inside it will become cov of xy. So the formula reduces to n into cov of xy by sigma x sigma y. And we know that cov of xy by sigma x sigma y is nothing but our relation correlation coefficient. So we are writing it by n into r x y. Okay. So summation u y v i gives us the value n into r of x y correlation coefficient between x and y. Now to find out the value of this quantity, we know that that u i plus v i whole square cannot be negative because this is a whole square thing. Okay. So this whole square is obviously positive. So we are breaking the summation and we know the all values of ui square and vi square that already we have obtained summation ui square equals to n and vi square equals to n so we are putting this to value and 2n r of xy so from this inequality we obtain r of xy greater equal to minus 1 similarly we are considering ui minus vi square and taking this is also positive greater equal to 0 and from this inequality we have obtained the highest value of r xy is 1 so what we can combine combining these two relation we can derive that r of x y is lying between minus 1 and 1 so how to remember the correlation coefficient 
whenever we can see that rxy having the value minus 1 exactly then we can say that two variables are perfectly negative correlated and if we have one then we say that it is perfectly positive correlated but big but these two things are in case for the theory okay in practical purpose we directly cannot get exact value minus one or plus one but it is for the theorem purpose that we have obtained the maximum value equals to one and minimum value of the correlation coefficient is minus one if the correlation coefficient value is zero then it is no correlation is there and if it between lie between zero and one it is positively correlated and between minus one and zero it will be negatively correlated okay after that we will come to the rank correlation what is the rank correlation say rank correlation is nothing but sometime we are measuring the bivariate data not quantitatively but rather than qualitatively say i am not measuring height and weight or the marks of the students i am measuring the merit of the students or the intelligence of the students or the iq level of the students or the behavior of the students so how the behavior that is a category which cannot be measured by quantity it is a qualitative nature so the behavior with the merit how this merit and behavior are correlated so this type of correlation if we want to find out then we cannot find out by this type of correlation with the help of simple sample correlation we have learned in the previous topic in the in the above previous lecture so for these cases we have to go for rank correlation so what is the measurement of rank correlation if two attributes are there capital a and b and for n pair of individual the rank correlation will be r equal to 1 minus 6 into summation d square n into n square minus 1 what is n n equals to the number of individual and what is d d equals to the difference of the rank of an individual in two different attributes okay for one student i am measuring the behavior as well as the merit so i am taking the rank between difference between the rank of the behavior and the merit so that is nothing but d okay so from this formula we can also say that the highest value of this rank correlation like correlation coefficient it is also equal to 1 and the lowest value is minus 1 so let us try to understand it by a simple problem it is a another most important problem have already come in university exam in the previous year okay so 10 competitors in a music contest are ranked by three judges say a b c and these are the ranks are given to the 10 competitors okay now we are considering the rank of the judge a there is nothing but x the rank given by the judge b is y the rank given by the judge c is z so we will categorize this by this a b and c what is the question now we have to use the rank correlation and determine which pair of judges has nearest approach to common liking of music okay that is the question so we are measuring the table so we have to find out simply d1 d2 and d3 since there are three uh, different judges are there and there are three different ranks are given so we are taking the ranks given by a as x rank given by b as y rank given by c as z and we will take the difference of these two ranks so x minus y whole square x minus z whole square or y minus z whole square so simply we have calculated d1 d2 d3 and according to our formula that i have given you that will be the rank correlation between x y will be r x y equals to 1 minus 6 d1 square what is d1 that is the difference between x and y so by d1 we are measuring the difference between x and y so it will give us the rank correlation between x and y so after measuring the rank correlation we can see the value is minus 0 0.21 similarly we have measured the rank correlation between yz and zx so among these three rank we can see that these three ranks among these three rank which is the highest value of the correlation that is 0 0.63 so that is the positive value we can see here so the highest positive value which we obtain among all the rank correlation that will be the best choice okay so here we can see that x and z will give us 
the best choice that means the judge a and judge c have the common liking of their music hope all of you have understand now this topic and try to solve this problem by yourself and if you have some books then practice such type of problem from the examples okay i will upload more videos for your better understanding as per your feedback